Hello folks and welcome back to another edition of BC Renovation Magazine. So in this video I'm going to show you how I'm going to put a set of bifold doors on this closet here and I've got one done here already so we are going to be uh, installing a door just like this and if you're interested in seeing how I do that stick around. Yeah, okay folks, so the next video here in our little series on how we do the interior finishing in uh, in, in these homes that we're working on is uh, how I finish the uh, closet doors. And so, you know, there's a few different ways that you can do closet doors. Um, and for this home, I've uh, chose these bifolds. Now you can put swinging doors on, you know, you can do sliding doors. There's, there's lots of different doors that you can do, but uh, I find that these bifold doors work pretty good and uh, you know for they don't they're not really expensive you know they're they're good value and when you have uh, tight spots like we have here for example you know you don't have really have room to swing a door nicely well there's room to swing it but it gets a bit crowded you know with the swinging door um, then we get into a bedroom like this or a room like this where we have a large closet like this um, you know, so you could see, you know, the sliding bypass doors is, is a way that it's done. Uh, one thing that I don't like about the sliding bypass doors is that, you know, you can only have half of the closet door open at once, like half of the opening. You always have one door is in the way, whether you're sliding it, you know, one side to the other. And when you have uh, closets like this, uh, shelves like this, where, you know, you're kind of in the middle like that, with a sliding bypass door, you're never going to get full access to that. So uh, I have decided to, you know, go with the bifolds. And I know a lot of people don't like bifolds, but uh, we're going to do them here. So uh, I'm going to show you how to install a set of bifolds. And I'm going to do it with this opening right here. So um, I do it a little bit different than a lot of people do. Um, you know, again, I sort of like to make things look a little bit more finished. So, you know, I uh, I don't like to see a gap, you know, on the side of the door. So I'm going to show you how I do this half jam. This is called a half jam and casing to, uh, you know, uh, get rid of that, that gap between the, the door and the, and the opening. And uh, I'm just going to go through that uh, process with you step by step. All right. So we have our opening and what we've done to prepare this opening is uh, we when we did the rough frame we uh, you know framed it to the size now you have to pick your doors can okay? you have to pick pick your doors ahead of time and so you get the right size and you know everything has to be framed in the way you're going to do it um, you know if you've, your openings already framed it's probably uh, been framed for well it could be framed for anything but you might you may have to adjust it you know to make it fit your rifle doors anyways we built this uh, opening here for our bifold doors. We were, knew we were going to do it. And so, you know, underneath uh, this drywall here, we have the, the rough opening. And so what we did was, um, when we did the drywall work, we uh, put our drywall inside the closet and we wrapped it around the molding and we put a corner bead on here. So this finishes the inside uh, edges of the, of the closet opening here. And then on the outside, you can see here we have uh, this, this the drywall, the raw edge of the drywall. So what we're going to be doing here now is installing uh, a half jam. And that's that uh, piece of 1x2 trim that we put on here. And then that gives us a place for the back of the closet door to close up against. Okay. And uh, so that's kind of the first, the first uh, thing we have to do is get that half jam installed. It's called a half jam because it doesn't go all the way. If it went all the way, we would call it a, like a full jam. But since it only comes into the opening, you know, roughly half ways, it's called a half jam. Um, on this one here, I actually had a little bit of a change. So you can see I had to uh, uh, pack this down a little bit, shim it down a little bit uh, to make my track work. Um, and that's because from when I, you know, decided to do this to the time I actually got to this, there was a change in the doors and, and I got a different door than what I had planned, which is a little bit shorter in length. And so I had to just, you know, build this down a bit to make my track work. Uh, that's kind of an irrelevant point. You know, the, the uh, theory here is all the same and this thing, I'm kind of showing you how to go about this. So, uh, 
what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and cut my pieces of half jam and I'll, I'll put those in and when I get to that uh, point I'll, I'll show you how that looks. Alright so I've gone ahead and uh, cut and fit my half jams and the material that I'm using for that is just this uh, one by two primed finger joint pine uh, material and you can buy this at your I get, I get this at Home Depot there's nothing fancy about this folks it's just plain old stuff that's read, readily available to anybody um, I like to use the wood for this uh, because it seems to stand up a little bit better I, and I'm just you know kind of old school I like wood but uh, it, this is also available in a uh, primed MDF product uh, which is a like a fiber board and there's nothing wrong with that you can use that uh, you know we're doing a paint finish here so uh, uh, you know we're, do, we're just using a, a paint spec material now if you wanted to frame this out with wood you know then you could use a you know piece of three quarter inch wood three quarter by inch and a half and uh, you know and then a, a stained casing whatever you know lots of different ways to do this but basically I start at the top okay you can see I fit the top piece in there and so it goes right out to the side of the opening there like that okay and yeah, same thing over on the side right and then I fit my side pieces underneath that and I'm using a, uh, a pinner to nail my stuff on so I'm using this this nailer here and I'm using a two inch pin two inch uh, 18 gauge now if you don't have a pinner you can just use finishing nails nothing wrong with that and uh, before I put the uh, strip onto the wall I put a, uh, a bead of glue behind it so I'm actually gluing the piece to the wall as well and uh, you know this is the this is the glue that I like to use this little page is uh, wood glue um, if you've been following along with this little series you've seen me use this uh, in other places when I was building these shelves and um, you know putting a window trim on so uh, yeah we've got a couple other videos that show that if you're interested in that go back and have a look at those but uh, yeah, that's the this is the glue that I like to use and so now what this is going to do is it, now we have a place here to mount our track and now this uh, piece of half down on top is going to hide the track so we won't when we're looking at it from the front of the opening like this you can see here you can't see the track so the track is up in behind that piece of half jam there okay so you can see how that works there okay and then on the sides you can see how the sides comes out you know that uh, five eighths of an inch three quarter whatever it is and that gives us a place that when the door closes it goes back in behind that and again we're not looking into the gap okay and I didn't mention the size here so here uh, I have a six foot opening so I'm using uh, two three foot bifolds so you buy these bifolds in, the, in a kit and so it comes as a kit um, I'm just showing you here I've got this one opened up so the doors come in this kit it includes a hardware package the track and everything is in there and so here's the track that uh, that we're using and I'll show you how I'm going to install that um, if you're so to, in order to make uh, doors for a six foot opening you have to buy two three foot kits and then you put them together uh, in this case here we have a two foot door so we just all we did here was just uh, buy a one two foot kit and that that works for that opening all right, so the next uh, thing up here is I need to put the casings on. And so uh, I'll get set up to do that and I'll show you that's the, kind of the next step. And the casings uh, are gonna match the windows. So we're gonna be using this two and a half inch casing. Again, you know, we're having, it's just a paint spec uh, finish in this home. So uh, the, the, the casing is a half inch deep and two and a half inches wide and uh, yeah I'll just show you how I'm gonna do that that's up next all right so now I've gone ahead and made myself some reference lines you can see them there there's one there and up in the corner here you can see where I've gone here and here and that is a reference line for me to follow when I install my casing and this is the casing so I'm going to line up the edge of my casing 
with that reference mark there. And what that does is it gives me a reveal, uh, the same as on the windows, as I did on the windows, we get this little reveal here. All right, so you can see this little th reveal, it's three, three, three sixteenths, so not quite a quarter inch. And what that uh, little reveal there does is uh, it helps us take care of any discrepancies that we might have. It hides those kind of things rather than trying to line it up with the jam. A lot of uh, amateur uh, carpenters will will take and try and line it up like this, okay? So where you're lining up the edge of the of the uh, casing with the with the jam, and that's not the right way to do it, folks. The right way is to set it back like this, so you have this little bit of what we call reveal. All right, and on the inside, when we do our inside finishing. The reveal on our windows, uh, exterior door over there, our passage doors when we get to that, and all of these closet doors, it's, it's all the same. It's 3 sixteenths of an inch. And so to put these little reference marks on here, I've just gone around the whole thing and done that. I just use my uh, combination square here, and I just poke it out uh, 3 sixteenths of an inch past the edge end of the square, the edge of the square there. And then I simply take my combination square and I hold it on here. And uh, and then I just take my pencil and just scribe a little mark there. And that gives me a reference line then to follow. And it keeps me straight. I don't have to guess anything. I can just line it up I, and I set it just so I can just see that line. And, and that works out really well. So now uh, to start with the, the casing, we call this casing. And here again, this is the same material that you know that I've been using all along here. I've used it on this window. Uh, we've faced these shelves in here with the same material. You know, it's this, all the same stuff. Uh, this is a MDF primed MDF uh, MDF medium density fiberboard. Again, this is just standard stuff. Buy at uh, Home Depot, and uh, nothing fancy about that. Now, the the way I'm going to be putting the top on this is I'm, I'm mitering okay and i mentioned this when i when i uh did the window video um i don't try and measure that top piece it's very difficult to measure that especially when you get into like a six foot opening you know how do you hold that and make sure everything is right so the way you do that is you cut up you start with a miter on one end and you just line up your miter with the intersecting points there of those reference lines. And then you just, uh, you know, I'd, I'd have a longer board here. I'm just showing you this as, a, as an example. But this board would stretch all the way over there. So then once I have this lined up here, I can easily just hold the board and then go over there and, you know, make a, a tick mark where the intersection point is over there, okay? Now, if you're right-handed, I'm, I'm right-handed, so I'm showing you, you know, going left but what i usually do is i line up on the right on the left side and then come across and then make my tick on the right side okay and then once this is in place we just go ahead and nail it and uh and i'll show you how to do the sides all right so i'm going to go ahead and cut that top piece there now all right so you can see that i have got my uh, top piece installed there okay so you can see my miter it's just a 45 degree angle there and you can see how my uh, the inside of my miter comes down and meets that intersecting point right there. Okay, it's the same at the other end. Now you can see that I've nailed it to the jam um, every so often here. I haven't put any nails up on the top part of it yet, into the like into the framing, into the two x four framing. So I've just nailed it down close by the by the uh, jam and. Uh, Again, I'm just using my pinner here, and I have changed from uh, a two inch pin, which I used to nail the jams on, uh, and now I'm running an inch and a half pin in there. So the reason I change uh, the uh, length of my pin is because I'm nailing from here into this half jam. If I use the two inch, it would actually go through and come out the back here. So to prevent that, we have to go down to an inch and a half. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fit my side pieces and I'll nail them on the same way, okay, the same uh, as this. I will nail them here first and then I will come back and nail the outside part. And when I bring my miters together, uh, the top and the side, I will be putting a bead of that, that same glue there 
in there at, before I nail it. So I'll, I'll glue it and then I'll put it together and then I'll nail it down the side here. I'll do the same thing over there, put that one in and everything, once everything, I'm happy with everything, then I'll change it back to my two inch nails, pins, and then go around and nail the outside of it. And oh yes, there's one more thing here. Um, I mentioned I haven't used the tape measure at all on my casings yet so far. I showed, showed you how I, you know, hold it up there and, and mark it. So now I'm going to be using the tape measure and I'm going to measure from the floor to the top corner up here. Okay, I'll take that measurement and I'll subtract an eighth of an inch. So that gives me a little bit of room to adjust it. So it'll be about an eighth of an inch off the floor down there. Um, ultimately, you know, this is going to get trimmed around the bottom when we install the flooring. So in this case, we're planning to put a, a 12 millimeter uh, laminate plank floor in there. So, you know, we'll be trimming quite a bit off of that. So uh, I, I, on the sides, I just keep it a little bit uh, short, eighth of an inch. And again, you know, just measure on the long side, which is the outside of that uh, miter. Uh, and then just, just make the cut. And I'm just cutting these on my uh, miter saw set up here and so um, as I mentioned I've, I've taken my measurement and I'm at 82 and 7 8 and so the way I find this the easiest to do is I cut my miter first okay so this is going to go up to that corner or that meet that other corner the top corner so I cut that miter first and then I hook my tape measure on the on the long side of the of the board here okay just like this all right, and uh, stretch it down and make my pencil mark where where I want to cut it, which is right here. And then this is just a straight cut. So it's easier to cut the miter first and measure off the top of the miter than it is to try and, you know, try to measure from the flat end, the square end to the miter. Okay, so it's just a, just a, little, just a little tip for you there. All right, so our opening is all trimmed out now. So you can see the miter. I, a lot of people have trouble with miters. I'm not sure why. Um, they're not that difficult. But uh, you can see now how we've got this all trimmed out. You can see our 3 16 reveal there. I finished nailing off around the outside edge with the two inch. So these are inch and a half. And these are two inch pins. Um, we're now we're ready to install our, uh, our track. It's the next thing that gets installed. So the track's gonna get installed on this little step right here. And then once we have the track installed, then we put the floor anchors in, and then we can uh, hang the doors. So uh, next next step up is to get the doors unpackaged and uh, get the hardware out, and I'll show you what that looks like, um, and get the track installed. And just for fun, folks, you can see I'm working in this room where we're doing these doors. And you can see I have a bunch of boxes here. Um, let me know in the comments what you think all these boxes are for. It's going into this home and it's going to be one of the videos, there's probably going to be a few videos on that project there. So let me know what you think that's all about. Okay, so our bifold uh, door units come in a, in a package and in the package we have the door itself. And they also include a, a box with hardware which you know is the track and uh, they also give us uh, this little bag of hardware which is our pivots and slides and you know pull and so in this case we've got two of these kits and so we've got uh, two tracks two three foot tracks we're making a six foot uh, door here so uh, we've got two tracks so, so we're going to have to join the two tracks together and they give us this little uh, joiner thing here which is going to you know fit in inside there so you know in this little bag of hardware I'll show you um, got this other one set up over here. We we get uh, these pivots. So um, the door comes with just these holes pre-drilled, and so then we have to install these pivots. This is the bottom uh, of the door. So this is the bottom pivot, and so this pivot is going to get anchored into uh, this L bracket, which we'll be placing on the floor, um, and the. Uh, this is on a screw, so this gives us some adjustment of the door up and down. So if you have a door that's dragging or that's too far down, um, we, we can uh, you know, adjust the height of it by adjusting this screw, turning it in or out. 
the top of the door. Again, it just has the holes in it, so uh, we have to ins put these uh, inserts in, and so this is the top pivots. Okay, and you can see that these are uh, spring-loaded, okay? And so one, one pivot will uh, anchor onto the track, and then the other one goes into this a slide here, and it slides. So I'll show you this on the door we already have installed. So up here you can see that slide, so that pivot goes into that slide, and that's what uh, you know guides the door and keeps it, uh, you know, holds it. The other, the other one goes into that bracket up there, and that holds the door uh, in place up there as you open and close it. All right, and then of course we have the the bottom one, which is down there. Now I have that mounted up uh, on that little block there because I'm making allowances already here for my flooring so we're going to be putting down some uh, uh, half inch uh, uh, 12 millimeter uh, laminate planks which is equivalent to the thickness of this roughly so you know I've got this set up so that when I put my floor in here I'll reinstall this bracket then I'll remove it I'll put the floor in and I'll put it back then I'll have the correct gap underneath the door between the bottom of the door and the uh, and the floor and again, that pivot there screws up and down so I could raise and lower my door. And then, and then because of the slot in that uh, bracket, I can move the door sideways in order to get uh, you know, my sideways adjustment, to get my proper clearances. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead now and uh, get this track installed up in the top there and get ready to, uh, get ready to hang the doors. All right, so I've got my top track installed there. You can see it. You can see it there. Now I've only sort of temporarily put it there in case I need to make an adjustment. But you can see how I've left this gap here between the track and the back of the half jam. Now you don't want to put that uh, track right up tight to this because what will happen is it shifts your pivot points ahead and it, and the, the door will bind on 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 this side jam here. So you have to set it back about about 3 16 of an inch, something like that, right from there to there. And then similarly, I've installed my uh, bottom uh, bracket here. And again, I've just put one screw in. When we get to the point where we're actually going to install these forever, you know, then I'll be putting screws in here as well and tying it back to the wall here. But uh, this is all gonna come out of here again when I do the flooring. Once the flooring is down, then I'll set this bracket uh, permanently. Uh, I'll be removing this block putting flooring underneath and then installing this bracket on top of the flooring. But this just gives us, like I said before, you know, the, you know, relatively the thickness of the floor. And so here again, you can see how I've spaced that bracket back from the jam. And that's again, so that it moves the pivot point away from the back of the jam so that it's not going to pinch when the door closes. If it pinches here, it will want to push the door open on you. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, hang the doors. Okay, so I'm just going to explain to you how we adjust these doors. So these doors can be adjusted up and down, and we do that by, again, you know, that pivot that I showed you before. We can screw that pivot in or out to raise or lower the door. Now for sideways, we have this little, basically a little track here. So we can move the, you know, depending on where we put the pivot, that pivot, this pivot, in this track, uh, determines you know where where the door is sideways so we can move our door on the bottom sideways by where we place it in the track on the top our pivot goes into this bracket here and you can see we have a, a, a screw here we can uh, loosen that screw and when we loosen that screw we can slide that in the, that bracket there in the track that pivot point in the track there to adjust the uh, door sideways so we in between the between this pivot which slides okay and that pivot which we you know place in the track accordingly we can get our gap across the top of the door even all right so you can see here the gap I have across the top of the door so we can make that even by manipulating the, the door sideways top 
and bottom to get it straight. All right, so just if your opening's a little bit off, that's how you, that's how you do it. And, you know, so we have to have clearance, you know, between the top of the door and our half jam here, you know, for the door to open, because you can see as it opens, you know, it has to be able to slide underneath the half jam. You know, so, um, uh, it's nice to have the, you know, about, uh, you know, again, 3 16 3 16 I keep mentioning 3 16 but that's kind of the, uh, you know, the measurement that you go with. All right, so I'll carry on with uh, installing these doors. I just kind of want to explain that while the door is out, how you do the uh, adjustments. Okay, folks, so that's about as far as we're going to go with this now. Uh, you know, these doors are still coming out. Uh, we have to take them out for paint. That's just primer on there. And so, you know, to uh, paint them, we'll be, we'll be spray painting them with an airless sprayer. And when we get to that point, I'll show you how that works. But, but that's basically, you know, it's, if they're basically fit, uh, you know, before you get to your painting, you want to get all your fitting done so you're not monkeying around with stuff after it's painted. Um, so yeah, this is uh, kind of how it goes. And so you can see here, we've got the track installed. Now on the back of these, when you have two doors that meet like this, uh, you, you, you put these little uh, clips one on each door and what those do is when the door comes together it holds the door together um so that the you know the face of the door is flat so you can kind of see how you can kind of see how they bypass each other there and then they they sort of uh, snap into place there so i'll be tightening these gaps up you know once once i get everything painted and reinstalled for the uh you know last time but like I say, you know, we've got flooring to do and all of that, but, uh, you know, everything is there now. And basically we're ready to, you know, take that all apart now and sand it and, and paint it. So that's kind of the process there. And, uh, I just wanted to show you how I do bifold doors. Now, you know, depending on the, uh, the, the brand that you get, the manufacturer you, that you get, um, you know, it could be slightly different than, you know, than what I've done here. So, uh, Next video, we're going to get into uh, hanging our passage doors. And so you can see here, I've purchased uh, some passage door units. These are pre-hung units. And in mobile homes, we have some different things that we have to do. And so those are set up for a two by four wall. Okay, this jam is set up for a two by four wall. And we have two by three walls here. So our doors are actually too wide for our, for our walls and anyway i'm going to show you how we're going to take care of that and that's the next video so thanks for watching folks and we'll see you on the next one bye bye